from the cut uh, from the hijack sorry silence falls and and Luna Love Guts call which we've seen a lot of him doing calling in position out of position um, most of the time when he has a hand here he's free betting although what has changed now is that his stack has gone down at um, a lot in, in in big blinds. He's now got less than 20 bigs, which we think perhaps is much more of a shoving stat than, than a calling stat. Um, I think if I three bet to about 30, 35k, it, it's pretty polarized. I've got how I'm committing myself to Luna. I think perhaps the best play might just to be jam here, which is what I do. Uh, try and get a call from worse holdings, ace 10, and worse pocket pairs. Um, I think if I re if I re raise to 30 or 35k, not really give my opponents too much of a chance to make a mistake with with a complete air ball because it's it's very often I'm then I'm then folding. We're not quite deep enough. They've only got 20 bigs, so I think the best option is, is just shoving in and trying to make a, myself look a little bit weaker than I am. Perhaps get called by a lot worse holdings. Um, initial raise of folds, uh, Luna calls, um, and he did have aces. Uh, as you can see from the ball come out, I did turn the 10. I don't think I've played the hand particularly badly. I think that's very standard. Um, I guess I shouldn't be surprised Luna woke up with aces there as he's only flatted with 20 big blinds. But as we've seen from, from, from the previous hands, that he does flat a lot of hands. So uh, I don't think it was it was a bad shove. You just need that, that to win the, win the big situations uh, deep in, in the tournaments with the big Etsy pots. And that's what I've done here. Right, we're now on the final table. Uh, I've chipped up a little bit just through stealing blinds. Uh, you know, when there's sort of 10, 12, 11 left, it's a very good opportunity for the big stats to be putting a, a, uh, opening a lot of hands and and perhaps putting a lot of three bets into the smaller stacks who do want to climb up the pay, the pay ladder and don't want to find save the bubble. It does depend on who, on who's at your table because I think uh, this this does look to be quite a, a weak final table. Uh, the only the only real decent reg I see there is bet you don't bet. Um, Silence I know is very capable, but I don't think he's um, he's one of the top players online. So yeah, we're liking our chances. We've got a great stack, and uh, it's our tournament to win now. Ace Queen in the big blind, blinds three and six. Sorry, blinds three and a half seven. And uh, the best opens to 14k from uh, under the gun plus three, sorry, under the gun plus two. Um, Ace Queen plays well post flop. Uh, on a lot of boards, it does have showdown value, whereas uh, perhaps other hands don't. I don't remember three betting here because I don't have too much information on the guy. I don't think he's going to be four bet folding very often, so it doesn't make it very profitable for me to, to be three betting uh, that sort of dynamic doesn't exist yet although I do know that he can be opening quite wide um, he's not short stat by any means so so we're just going to flat from the big blind and, and, and take a flop here and, uh, and try and keep a lot of worse hands in although we're out of position we're getting a good price to see a flop and we have a pretty strong hand uh, it's come 4-4-8 four, four, with two clubs, uh, it doesn't look a particularly dangerous board. So after calling pre-flop with Ace Queen, we're not going to be giving up a lot of the time here. I mean, if the flop was King High or or a little bit, you know, three clubs or something, I think check folding is fine. But I think unless you have a real read on the guy, I think check folding here is a little bit too weak. I mean, I'm not just calling here pre-flop to hit an Ace or a Queen. I'm calling because uh, it's a very strong holding, and I don't think that flop really changes an awful lot. Um, I do value my post my post uh, flop play very highly, and I think sort of check calling these flops does give yourself some tough decisions in later streets, um, particularly when you don't improve and I still only have ace high. But but that's necessary sometimes in in in, in playing decent solid tournament poker. So we do check call the flop here. In terms of two of, of spades, it brings another flush draw on. But I mean I've got the ace of spades, so I'm not. I'm not hugely worried about that. Um, he hasn't got the best sort of stack to be to be barreling another flush draw here because if he barrels 40k then I call the pot goes up to 150 and he's got much more than the pot size bet left. 
if he had a pot size bet left, if he could bet 40k or 50k and have a pot size bet left on the river, uh, I think that's quite an optimal situation for his stack size because he can jam a lot of rivers whether he's got there or he hasn't. Um, I think if he has a hand, if he's just see betting a hand like like ace high here, um, he's probably just going to be checking back the turn. He might put me on a draw. Well, I'm not sure. I think if he's definitely got a hand like sevens or or something that that beats me, uh, that isn't a, that isn't an overpair to the board. Uh, he might just be checking back here the turn. Uh, I think the type of hands he does bet is obviously complete bluffs, um, perhaps an eight, flush draws, and overpairs. Uh, standard bet here between 40 and 50k. So it does 42k, and I check call again. I'm going to reevaluate. I'm still not convinced that I'm beat here. Uh, and the, the river isn't a particularly good one for me now. It completes the flush line of clubs. Um, you will be thinking, I've checked called here two streets, what am I re-representing? Well, if I had an overpair to the flop, uh, on, I'm probably re-raising pre-flop with, with tens and better. So, I think he pretty much counts out that I've got an overpair. At best, I've got pocket nines, perhaps pocket eights, and there's not many fours in my range. I think he knows most of the time my, my range is probably ace highs here, and, and a very occasionally flush draws. Um, I think it's a very good card for him to barrel. If he hasn't got a hand, I think if he's got an overpair here, he's going to be a little bit scared of the flush. Probably um, trying to try and bet a little between a quarter and, and a half of the pot, perhaps 60 or 80k, to try and extract value from from an eight. Um, I think his bet size on the river here is going to tell a lot about what hand he has now and, and really give it away. He's representing an overpair to the board or a flush draw. Uh, and I think with both both of the value hands here, he's going to try and get the most value out of me on the river. Uh, having said that, the most value out of me probably isn't any more than half the pot. Because if he does have a flush draw, uh, obviously it's a very scary river for me. I don't think he's going to be betting sort of more than half the pot there. Because what hands can I really call with him? I've got ace high, it's not a good card for me. Um, if he's got an overpair and a flush draw has got that, I think he's not going to bet over 80k because the only thing that might call him is, is going to be a flush. Uh, so I think his bet size is going to tell a lot. I think he's going to be seeking value from obviously all over pairs and flush. But I don't think he. I think he may be betting a little bit, little bit less than half the pot, perhaps to induce something from me or to to be more, much more guaranteed to get a call. The range of hands I can be check calling here is is really really slim. Um, so I don't see why he'd be over betting. The, I don't see why he'd be putting a a big value bet on the river when there's there's just not too much that I can call with. Um, so about 104k, and I'm thinking with his value hands as I, as I went through, um, I didn't think he was going to be putting in a 100k bet there with a flush, um, unless he puts me in hand like six sevens or or something like that. I still think he, it's a dangerous river, and he would have tried to value slightly less to, to get to get the call. I think that looks much more like bluff uh, than anything just for the reasons I've said I, I don't, I'm not representing much so if I'm not representing much how can I pay off that bet without a hand uh, pretty much my reason for calling I mean perhaps then uh, you can look at that and say well that's the reason he should be uh, putting a big value bet on the river there uh, but I don't think he's on that, on that sort of level so We've checked call there, a bit of a hero call. It's worked out in our favour, and uh, and I think just decent post flop logic has has brought us the decision there that he wouldn't be betting that much in the river with a value hand. If the river was slightly different, like a uh, an offsuit nine, and, and nothing got there, then I, I really do think perhaps he is going to be uh, valuing his over pairs a little bit more and trying to get paid from mate. Obviously. Uh, uh, if I had, if I was check calling a, a lot of eights, ace eights, and and, and eight seven suiters and stuff, it's a horrible river for me. So why is he going to be betting over a hundred k when he knows probably most of the time I'm going to be folding? He's going to be valuing it slightly less. I think that, that helped me make my decision, helped me make the correct call. Very next time, then we've got ace ten off and the small blind. We've taken the chip lead at the table, um, and obviously. The difference between eighth place and fifth and fourth and third is a real big difference. So, right now we're going to be looking to make to make the most of our chip stacks. Uh, put put the players sort of with uh, 
with 300k and 400k under some tough decisions because there is some there is a best there with less than 